It's Tuesday, October 8th, 2013. I'm Alex Jones. Get ready for another original edition of Teleprompter Free InfoWars Nightly News. Straight ahead. Tonight. The tyranny of selective enforcement is in full swing as senior citizens are held at gunpoint at Yellowstone National Park. Meanwhile, an immigration rally is allowed to continue on the closed National Mall. Then, a government mind control center forces sixth graders to destroy the Bill of Rights because freedom is outdated. And Alex Jones sits down with the founder of Oath Keepers, Stuart Rhodes, in studio, up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. I've got to be honest, I'm really stunned by the level of flagrant arrogance, bullying, and tyranny by the rogue federal government. I read local news articles out of the Eagle Tribune and others uh, there in the uh, region around Yosemite Park. And I read the description of the park guides and of the tourists that were visiting from Germany, Canada, Japan, you name it, of being checked into the hotel and paramilitary guards running around from the park service with guns yelling lockdown, lockdown. And then the scared people came out of their hotel and they said, get back in, you're not allowed to leave uh, until uh, basically uh, uh, your time is up at the hotel. You're not allowed to even look at the park now that things are shut down. Buses would pull in and people would get off, seniors, and they would pull guns on them and say, get back on your bus. This is so absurdist, it's beyond any comedy that I could ever Imagine, and the story's up on InfoWars.com. Feds hold seniors at gunpoint during National Park shutdown. The local tour guide getting off the bus called it Gestapo tactics, used to detain tourists in locked hotel. And the Germans and the Japanese and the Canadians are saying, we're never coming back to America. We're running. Your country's in trouble. I mean, can you imagine running around going, lockdown, lockdown, lockdown. Everybody's coming down in the lobby. What's going on in the privately run lodges? They're like, you know, you've got to leave or you're not allowed to come out of the hotel. And then people tried to leave and they wouldn't let them leave. I mean, this is just any excuse to lay their hands on us. I'm surprised America's fallen this far, but it gets worse, ladies and gentlemen. World War II vets are saying they're going to storm barricades surrounding Iwo Jima Monument that is right off the side of the road. I've been there before, right off the side of the road at Arlington Cemetery, Arlington Cemetery, they're even shutting parts of that down, ladies and gentlemen. And after veterans uh, walk past the barricades of the Lincoln Memorial and the World War II Memorial, they've now wired it shut and put armed guards there, and they're arresting and ticketing people. And now, it was in the news today, if you jog on the sidewalk of federal property, you're not allowed to use the federal property uh, that everybody paid for with tax money, and you are ticketed or arrested. You cannot make this level of garbage up. And then, as if it can't get any more Orwellian, well, forget Orwellian, or Orwell, Orwell never thought of stuff like this. Hundreds of thousands of illegals and their supporters were allowed to have demonstrations today on the mall when no one else is allowed into it to visit any of the memorials. So citizens can't visit it, but the illegals are there for their, quote, civil right to have open borders. The globals really just want to drive down wages and get rid of national sovereignty. Nothing against the illegals either. They're just fleeing countries collapsed by the globalists. I don't even blame them. But the point is, is that they're allowed to have First Amendment. Nobody else is. And they've had park rangers that aren't tyrants go public and say, quote, we've been ordered by the administration to make life miserable, and it makes me sick. And it's disgusting. So this is the type of stuff that's going on. And it really shows you how rogue and out of control this government is, really trying to teach us that we're good little slaves. Because they know we've woken up. They know the military and police are waking up. So they want to just try to dominate now and take over now and probably start a civil war now because they don't want us to peacefully take the country back. They know we're winning the info war for common sense. So it just blows my mind. Now, shifting gears to something even crazier. Sixth grade assignment, destroy the Bill of Rights. Kit Daniels found this on the constitutional assignment of the school year. 
This is federally paid for, like Common Core. Two plus two equals five. That's what they say. I'm not kidding. Two plus two equals five, or you're racist. Sixth grade assessment. Destroy the Bill of Rights. Rewrite it to not be uh, uh, evil and, and, and to accept the Patriot Act and the war on terror, to accept secret arrest and torture. I mean, this is what they teach children in America because they've determined it's outdated. Now, I want to go to the next report here, just, just dealing with all of this. Soon, drones may be able to make lethal decisions on their own. They've already come out in the last five years in England, Europe, and the U.S. with autonomous drones. They're already operating. Now they're just announcing it to the good little slaves that they will decide uh, when to kill you. They will decide. And in the Homeland Security training videos, it shows drones taking out two American redneck types shelling each other guns in a field. So, so this is the type of just tyranny on steroids that we're dealing with. And then continuing with Warren Buffett, the biggest recipient for Berkshire Hathaway and Wells Fargo that he owns and controls, of 400 plus billion in taxpayer money the last five years since 2008. He's the guy that lobbies to raise poor people and middle classes taxes, saying tax rich people more when he wrote the laws to exempt himself to get more of your tax money. It's the ultra rich above the law taxing the nouveau riche, the new wealthy, the working class, the blue collar, you name it. And they're taxing everybody with dollar devaluation that's accelerating. New article out, Buffett reaps $10 billion from crisis error investments just this year. This is how the insiders work. And then he comes out and says he wants to help. He wants to help everybody. Uh, we're going to go to break in a moment. But first, dealing with the selective enforcement of government shutdowns, here is a Tyranny Watch report with Gigi Ernetta, InfoWars Nightly News reporter, and then we'll be, we'll be back after the break. Welcome to Tyranny Watch. I'm Gigi Ernetta. This administration is definitely tyranny gone wild. Recently, seniors that were visiting Yellowstone Park were held hostage in their hotels by park rangers. The group had booked to stay in a hotel within the park, which soon turned into a prison as the visitors were told to remain in the building until their stay expired, despite the fact that the tour guide had already paid the $300 fee to enter the park. The group had Japanese, Canadians, and Americans. Now that's a welcome committee. Way to go, park ranger! USA! USA! In New York City, the veterans had gathered at the Vietnam Memorial Plaza to protest the 12th anniversary of the war in Afghanistan by reading out the names of the deceased U.S. soldiers. Park Services rejected the group's application to hold a protest at the site, so they hauled off our veterans in paddy wagons. In Washington, D.C., the police ordered tourists and Vietnam War veterans who were visiting the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall to leave the memorial at one point on Friday. Organizers for the Camino Americano, March for Immigration Reform, Susana Flores confirmed that the Park Service will allow the event to take place under the group's rights granted by the First Amendment. Some 30 members of Congress, including House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi, are expected to attend the Camino Americano assemblage. So let me get this straight. United States veterans cannot attend their own memorial. But Senora Flores can have her First Amendment rights to have her rally on immigration reform. Park rangers shut down a family-owned and fully booked in along the Blue Ridge Parkway in North Carolina on Saturday, driving customers away during the peak tourist season. Bruce O'Connell, the owner of Pisgah Inn, reopened his lodge after the Park Service demanded he close his business by Thursday due to the partial government shutdown. These park rangers don't know the Constitution, and they certainly don't know the strength of real Americans. Back off, Smokey. Remember, the government will eat their own, so beware. Now, you can do something about this. You can stand up against the tyranny. Go to prisonplanet.tv and give your username and password to up to 10 people. Do you see the division being created by our government? It seems like they're trying to incite something here in the United States. And I'm going to leave you with this. The government still has their gym memberships. The exclusive gyms available only to members of Congress have remained open throughout the shutdown. So their memberships can't be touched during the shutdown, but they can throw Granny out of her home on Lake Mead during the shutdown. I'm Gigi Arnetta for Tyranny Watch on the InfoWars Nightly News.
Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. Alex Jones here to warn you about some of the most important health information you may ever hear. I'm talking about radiation, radioactive fallout, radioactive particles contaminating the Northern Hemisphere. Conservatively, since the 1940s, the Northern Hemisphere of our planet has more than doubled its background radiation. In fact, that was before Fukushima exploded. Now the levels are going up and up and up. Fish are contaminated in the Pacific, and the FDA, the EPA, and others, they're not worried about it. They've been raising the levels of what they claim is safe radioactive particles. So after more than two years of research into how to protect my family, looking at all the literature, talking to the experts, across the board they agreed, iodine is key, but of the family of iodine, nascent, natural, non-GMO, non-factory iodine that comes from the earth is absolutely paramount for your thyroid and other functions in the body. The literature, the research, it's there. It's not my opinion. It is admitted that iodine is essential for the health of our bodies overall, and nascent iodine is the best form. Now, we're announcing the launch of InfoWarsLife.com, and we're going to bring you scores of products over the next few years that we're researching and developing. But nascent iodine is the first product we're coming out with because it's so important, and it's also listed as a fluoride detoxer. It does so many other things. Your body needs it, and when you don't have enough iodine, forget the radiation, your thyroid absorbs the sodium fluoride and other things. Nascent iodine and InfoWars Life Survival Shield in double strength at half the cost of the leading competitors. Please visit InfoWarsLife.com today. And we're back, my friends. We have a new segment weekly on the show called Land of the Free, Home of the Brave. Because only in the nanny state, good old U.S. of A, have they banned dodgeball, cartwheels in the last decade all over the country, and now shaking hands or patting someone on the back. I mean, supermax prisons are the only place that are this bad. This is the tyranny of the trendiness. And now in Long Island, in New York, in New Jersey, they're banning bringing footballs, anything, to school because you might get hurt. And Time Magazine makes a joke of saying, you know, don't bring your balls, stop playing with your balls. But this is deadly serious. They're training children that if they say bang, bang, they get arrested. It's a thought crime. You can't write an English class about your dad who's in the Army and, and has an M16. You're arrested. There's no law against writing about that. These are authoritarians setting the precedent, just like in California and Pennsylvania, they've caught the schools watching kids over government-issued laptops at home, and then no one gets in trouble. I mean, it's beyond 1984. And let me give you a little tidbit here. Tomorrow on the radio, we're going to air the video that was shot today of 14 out of 20 Austinites signing a petition the organization's called Chumps. I'm not joking. This is how dumb they are. We, with a petition saying Chumps, to make everyone wear helmets to walk around or you're arrested. Okay? And if your kids don't wear helmets at all times, you're going to be arrested. So, and, and as long as we said it's for Obama, 14 out of 20 Austinites signed it. Leanne has coined a new term called libertarist. Is that how you pronounce it, Leanne? That's right. And she would, a few libertarians she ran into said, no, I think you shouldn't have to wear a helmet. And she told them, you're, you're libertarist. And then they got very upset. So that's going to be on the radio tomorrow slash TV. And then we'll have excerpts on the nightly news as well on the Wednesday edition. But, but this is the level of brainwashing we're talking about. Now, I want to go out to break here because after the news tonight, we're going to have a special report with the land commissioner who's going to back armed citizens marching at the Alamo because that's Texas law you can open carry. The Second Amendment. But the San Antonio police chief says he's going to arrest 
Anybody that exercises their Second Amendment, we're going to have reporters there coming up in a week and a half in San Antonio. So here's that clip as we go out to break and come back with Stuart Rhodes in studio. This isn't about uh, violating people's rights. It's not about gun control. It's not about politics. It's about the state law. If the firearm is carried in a manner calculated to cause alarm. And uh, in the officer's opinion at the Starbucks, this was the case. And that's why he was, uh, those people were cited. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest times. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, medical herbs, and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate, we have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with the new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. And welcome back to this Tuesday edition of InfoWars Nightly News. In studio with us, we have Stuart Rhodes, the founder of Oath Keepers. He's a constitutional lawyer and, of course, worked in Ron Paul's office. But now he's more widely known for the essential work he's doing with more than 30,000 members and hundreds of thousands of people that are supporters who are former military or current military or former or current police saying one simple thing. They will not follow unlawful, unconstitutional orders. And tomorrow, he's going to be in studio for a full hour on the radio talking about solutions and the big picture. And he's also here to tape uh, some interviews for Obama Deception 2 that's now coming out uh, March 15th, 2014. But in the 10 minutes we have here on the nightly news tonight, before we go to break and come back with, J uh, with Jakari Jackson and his interview with the state official, the land commissioner, on the armed march in San Antonio uh, that's coming up. Before we go to break and come back with that, uh, I wanted to get him to talk about the Second Amendment itself and why the tyrants hate it so much and why the liberty teeth are the number one target, not just our free speech, but our right to self-defense, are the number one target of the kleptocrats running our society. And that's why I have their ultimate enemy, a Barrett 50 caliber rifle that's only been used in one crime since it's been available uh, in the 1980s, but that they're trying to ban right now, not just legislatively here, but under the UN uh, treaty as well. So I thought I would bring out uh, this jewel of liberty uh, for the people, the Barrett 50. Uh, Stuart, good to have you here with us, buddy. Good to go. Glad to be here. Well, just spend nine minutes or so we have left tonight on the Second Amendment and why it's so important. Well, I've talked to people who came from the Soviet Union and those who survived East Germany 
like Gunter Spence, who you know from here in Texas, he was an East German lieutenant colonel, and they say over and over again, the big difference between what they went through and we, what we're going through right now is we still have the right to bear arms. It's a critical difference, and the founders put it there for a reason. It's meant to be the people's preservation of their own military capacity so that they are their own security, which is a safe place to put the, the power of the country. Their, their answer to the ancient question, who should guard the guardians, is that we should guard our, be our own guardians and guard ourselves. A citizen's militia, a citizen's army is the answer. Not professional police, professional warriors, because every time you have a class of warriors to protect the society and everyone else is just a worker bee, what do you wind up with? You wind up with a dictatorship where the warriors figure out, we might as well, might as well be running everything. That's what happens. And so they wanted us to maintain our own military capacity. And of course, anyone who designs to strip you of your rights, the first thing they want to do is disarm you so that you're not capable of taking care of yourself, you're dependent upon them, and so you're not a threat to them. And why would they feel, feel threatened by the American people if they didn't have bad designs for us? So obviously, this makes them wet their pants because they know that this will prevent them from being able to fulfill their ultimate goals. Switzerland is really where we got the model that and the Dutch, they phased out their Second Amendment there, but we got the model from the Swiss and others. Switzerland has the lowest crime rate in the world, not just Europe, and I noticed they've been drilling their own citizen military uh, for the collapse of Europe under socialism. They're preparing to repel the hordes of people during the collapse. Right, uh, the French. <laughs> exactly, and so, uh, it's inevitable on this socialist trajectory of Cloward and Piven that things are going to collapse. This is what Soviet-style government does. But how will that work for them here when there are 400 million guns and people aren't going to turn them in? How is it going to work for the secret police when they try to go out, like Schultz and Eatson talked about, and take people away? Well, two things. One is they want everyone to be afraid of organizing. That's the whole, that's the effect of the NSA spying on all of us. You get people who are afraid to associate with each other, afraid to even go on Facebook, and so you self-censor, so you're isolated. It's much easier than to go and grab you in the middle of the night one guy at a time. You might have a Barrett in your closet, but if you're in your underwear in the middle of the night when you come through the door of 12 guys, you really can't, you really can't use it. So they don't want you organizing. So that's one aspect of it. The other second big, big weakness we have is a lack of food storage. The American people are very vulnerable, so if they wanted to, they could just trigger an economic collapse and just starve you out. You know, you have plenty of guns, most Americans have guns and ammo, but hardly any food storage. So it's a big, huge weakness. They want to make us dependent. We've got to become independent. Right. And even if we're not 100%, that doesn't matter. 1%, 2%, 5%, 10%, the journey of a thousand miles, the old Chinese proverb, starts with a single step. We need to start that process. That's exactly right. And don't just, all the big lines around the corner at the gun shows, the same thing should be going on outside of Mormon canneries or any place that sells um, food storage outside of Costco. You should be thinking about logistics, not just guns and ammo, but also food, medicine, communications, fuel. All of those things are essential for, for, for maintaining your liberty and independence. I didn't mean to go there, but since they're putting up InfoWarsStore.com, MyPatriotSupply.com, and the great folks there, um, that's our great sponsor, high quality, affordable food. But the issue is DHS six months ago came to them and said, we want to buy everything you've got, but don't tell anybody. And they said no and went public with the letter. And it turned out all the other big suppliers, they're basically, that's the reason there's now a shortage of storable food and prices going up. Just like the bullets, the government's buying up all the food, the bullets, uh, you name it. Right. But were they doing that for the American people or just for their own units? No, it's for themselves. Right, exactly. So they're not preparing us, they're not, they're not preparing us to weather out an economic collapse and chaos. They're preparing their own troops. And for us, they're spending billions of dollars on ammunition. That's what's meant for us. What did you think of the paper targets that we broke? And people didn't believe it first. And the media called the company. They went, no, DHS paid $2.1 million for these paper targets of men, women, and children to shoot, no hesitation. Right. Well, it's, it's conditioning. Just like video games condition you to shoot at, at those things, so does so do the targets. Same thing. It's operant conditioning. Stuart, we got about four or five minutes left here. Other points concerning the Second Amendment, shaping the future battle space, as you say it. Where is the Republic today? Well, we are we are in an inverse situation for what the founders intended. Very weak people in very weak states, and with a with a you know top heavy increasingly draconian government, basically transplanting East Germany into the United States. 
So we need to get back to the, the founder's idea of the citizens' militia, of people who are responsible for themselves, both when it comes to their own fire protection, when it comes to their own law enforcement, you know, a posse back up the sheriff, relying on the neighbors to go and find the bad guy. Like in Boston, it should have been the neighbors who turned out to go search house to house for the bad guy. That's who found him anyway in, in the end. Not having them all be treated like sheep, staying in their pens while their warriors go look for the bad guy. That's not the founder's intent. And another good point to make is that for, for hundreds of years in the United States, in the colonies, before we were even a, even a country, the colonists defended themselves against the French and Indians, against the, you know, the aggressors in their frontiers, through the militia. That was a model that they followed for hundreds of years. It wasn't just Switzerland. It was their own experience. Now, that was an old, old, exactly European model used in smaller free states. Right. It came from England originally, but then in the colonies, that's, that's all they had. That was the army of the of the colonies, was the militia, the people themselves. And of course, then they years. said, uh, with the Bill of Rights, you're not going to have a standing army because those always are used to enslave us. Well, they they'd allowed for they allowed Navy. For Congress to have a, to have a standing army on, on certain occasions to to, to, to produce a, an army, but they still relied on and preserved the militia. That was the intent. Sure, my point is they said you cannot have a domestic quartered among us army that's stationed here because they're always used to take over. Right. Well, that's why in Article 1, Section 8, it says that the militia can be called forth to execute the laws of the Union, suppress insurrections, or repel invasions. We are supposed to be the domestic security force. The army is only for external use against foreign foes, not for use internally. Well, look at Switzerland. They don't even have an external army and no one dare invade them. Right. I mean, it's simple. We have globalists that want us to be domesticated slaves. You don't let slaves know how to fight. Right, and so and so they want you to feel like you know you're you're a nut, you're an extremist. If you want to have just basic infantry skills, so you can fulfill your responsibility of self-defense for yourself and your families and your community, they want you to believe that's somehow wrong and dirty. So we need to say we don't care what they think. We're going to go ahead and, and embrace the fact that we're supposed to be you know all Americans, all Americans are supposed to be warriors, all Americans are supposed to be soldiers. And so notice they're cool. going after because the best. Defense is being prepared and not being a pushover. It's very simple. Do you attack the fortress or do you attack the thing that's wide open? Uh, in closing, notice they want the AR-15 because if they can ban that lightweight battle rifle that's 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 very easily used by women, you name it, then they can go after all the others. And it shows it's used in two percent of the crimes, federal statistics. Just like Barrett's only been used in one crime, but they want it because they are really threatened by the American people with the military weapon. Yeah, it's the worst nightmare. Which is great. That's why everyone American should own one of these. Absolutely. This is the best one to own. What are you going to talk about? we got about three minutes left. What are you going to talk about tomorrow on the radio show live? Is our new initiative to form or civilization preservation teams, which is Oath Keepers stepping forward as an example. What we want to see in all the veterans halls and all the neighborhoods is, is um, teams for first responders, and mutual aid in, in every community. We're, we're gonna lead the way as an example, but we wanna go out there and teach everyone else to do the same thing. We, all Americans should form into teams to take care of themselves, their families, their neighborhoods, their churches, their veterans halls, their towns and counties from the bottom up to restore the republic. Wow, that sounds like free, independent people. That sounds like an American idea. Pretty evil, folks. The Southern Barbary <laughs> Law Center will be reporting on us. Well, we're going to go to break and end the official news and come back with Jakari Jackson's exclusive interview with the Texas Land Commissioner that is standing with the Second Amendment against the San Antonio police chief that says he will arrest anyone that open carries in San Antonio at the Alamo coming up in just about a week and a half. That's it for this edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Stay with us for the special report. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. I'm here with Jerry Patterson, the next Lieutenant Governor. How are you doing, Mr. Patterson? I'm doing really well. So can you just explain to us the position of Lieutenant Governor and what you hope to achieve? Well, the Lieutenant Governor is arguably the most powerful position in Texas government. Uh, and I'm not seeking power, but I frankly think that uh, we are on the cusp of going the wrong direction in Texas. And we need somebody who is not afraid, somebody who's straight. And I mean straight in the sense that I tell you what I think. 
and, and somebody who has specific things that he or she, in this case he, wishes to accomplish. And if you go to my website, votepatterson.com, unlike all the other candidates, you're going to see a very detailed enumeration of things having to do with the Second Amendment, and I encourage folks to go and read what I say about that. Uh, water, transportation, education, immigration. Uh, so I think folks are, are looking for leadership, and I think we have uh, too many uh, candidates who are more interested in looking good, um, and who are more interested in the next election than the next generation. Uh, and I'm only focused on doing what I think is right. Like some politicians and some office holders from the past in Texas. We have too few of them today. Recently we saw the issues with the people at the Texas Capitol building right. and the people out there carrying their black powder pistols and it's my understanding that you actually wrote that law. The definitions in chapter 46, uh, 01 definitions in this chapter, firearm does not include antique or curio firearm manufactured before 1899 or a replica of an antique or curio firearm manufactured before 1899, but only if the replica does not use rimfire or centerfire ammunition. And mine is a ball and cap. I was the author of the Texas Concealed Handgun Law in 1995, and one of the items of unfinished business was I wanted to make these uh, cap and ball replica revolvers not firearms under the law. So after I left the legislature, I wrote this statute. I gave it to a state rep and a state senator. They passed it, testified in favor of it. So I know the law very well. And a cap and ball revolver that does not shoot center fire, rim fire ammunition under the law is not a firearm. And that's under state and federal law. So they had no firearm. Mm -hmm. And their arrest was uh, unlawful. The law says you have to carry this uh, firearm in a manner calculated to alarm. Now carrying a, a pistol in a holster is not calculated to alarm. And think about the uh, interesting uh, testimony that's going to be, I guess, at trial, when at the same time that we're arresting this guy for carrying an antique replica pistol that under the law is not a firearm, at the same time, right there, were citizens lawfully carrying ARs and AKs, sling arms, and they weren't arrested. Mm -hmm. So to the average bystander walking around, assuming that anybody was alarmed, and frankly they should not be, why would you arrest a guy with an antique pistol that's not even a firearm under federal or state law? But then it's okay with the AKs and the ARs. It should be okay with AKs and ARs. That is the law in Texas. Open carry of a long gun is not uh, unlawful in Texas. And so what we have here is somebody, and I don't know, I doubt that it was the, the DPS officer, but somebody decided to make up law and say, I'm alarmed. You know, you have to have a reasonable standard to this. You can't just say, I'm alarmed. Uh, I mean, there are people who are easily alarmed. They don't make law either. Somebody has to have a reasonable standard. These gentlemen were arrested unlawfully. They broke no law. And uh, I'm anxious to see how this turns out at trial. Now, one of the things I'm anxious to see is this rally we have coming up on October 19th, where people are going to gather at the Alamo, carrying their long guns slung over their shoulders. Some people may have loaded firearms. There's several different groups. In my view, they ought to kind of get together and just pick one person to be in charge of all this, because uh, San Antonio PD has not been a friend of the Second Amendment. This isn't about uh, violating people's rights. It's not about gun control. It's not about politics. It's about the state law. If the firearm is carried in a manner calculated to cause alarm. Uh, they consistently, repetitively, even going back 20 years when I carried the concealed handgun law, uh, San Antonio PD was opposed to it. Now, there were other police officers and police chiefs that were opposed to it, most of whom have come around and say, you know, I was wrong. A DA in Harris County, Johnny Holmes, was adamantly opposed to it and wrote me a letter about three years after we passed it and says, I was wrong. So it's really refreshing to see some folks uh, fess up when they're wrong, but San Antonio PD has a policy uh, about open carry, and they are not going to allow it. They have no authority to make up the law, and that's what they're doing. So uh, I hope that San Antonio PD complies with the law. Now, as more and more people move here to Texas, we see Rick Perry campaigning to get people to come here to the state of Texas. Does this concern you at all? Because we have many people with many different ideologies. It does concern me. We have people moving here from foreign countries like California that I am concerned about. As long as they come to Texas and they're coming here because they share our values, they share our belief in the Second Amendment, which has nothing to do with hunting, 
It has nothing to do with recreational use. It has nothing to do with collecting. It has only to do with my uh, God-given, constitutionally enumerated right to keep and bear arms, to defend myself against a criminal element or an oppressive government. That's what it's about. And as long as they believe that way, as well as the other freedoms, and as long as they believe that we you know, don't need any more government regulation, that we have too much government, and they're coming here for those reasons, then I'm fine with it. I don't care where they come from. Uh, and, and it's a good thing. People came to Texas in the 1830s and 1840s and 60s because of, they were seeking liberty and opportunity. Same thing today. But they, in my view, they need to uh, you know, understand our values may be different than the values where they came from. Are you an advocate for state nullification? You know, we have the ability uh, under the Constitution to ignore whatever law is unconstitutional. Now, how do you make that determination? If the federal government were to pass a law and say, well, you know, you can no longer carry your firearm, or we're going to pass a law that says we're going to outlaw open carry of long guns, yeah, that would be unconstitutional law. And frankly, I don't know if nullification, I just go with ignoring. As land commissioner, I travel quite a bit. I spent quite a bit of time in the Big Bend National Park because we have some land adjacent to it. At one time, you could not carry in a, in a national park. You couldn't have possess a firearm. I ignored it. I uh, told the San Antonio newspaper I ignored it. They wrote an editorial saying he ignores the law. I said, I'm sorry, that's not the law. It's unconstitutional. When I go into border areas along the Texas border, I'm armed. And unless it's private property, where the private property owner has a right to tell me, I can't be there armed. But if it's public property, I'm armed. And so I ignore laws that I believe to be unconstitutional. As far as those unconstitutional laws, do you think that extends to the TSA? You know, I think it just extends to the TSA in some circumstances. It depends on how the TSA conducts themselves. You know, cavity searches, of course, we have some problems with cavity searches here in Texas with other law enforcement agencies, but it extends to how they conduct themselves. What do they do? And I would submit to you that sometimes they are infringing on the rights and the personal rights of privacy. Other times they are not. I don't think you can blanket uh, make a statement on that many TSA officers. I've, I try not to fly commercial if I can help it. I got a little airplane, I fly it, or I drive. Now we see the city of Chicago has now been deemed the murder capital of the United States of America, even though it has some of the strictest gun laws. So let me ask you, how do you feel about gun-free zones? Well, they're a target-rich environment for uh, the criminal element. I mean, I, I talk about this a great deal. I mean, with, uh, I'm probably the guy that most people call when it comes to the Second Amendment and, and, and firearms. And I use the analogy, had I been in the, a theater in Aurora, Colorado, fewer people would have died. And that was a gun-free zone. It was private property, and they had banned carry. And the people, when I say that, they look at me and say, oh, that's impossible. I mean, that guy had a... You know, he had an AR and he had body armor and all of that stuff. And I say, look, the first time someone had returned fire to that, in the direction of that shooter, the first time a, a, a round had gone off and it didn't come from the shooter, the dynamic would have changed. You don't have to bring him down to save lives. And instead of that shooter just calmly walking up and down the aisles, you know, just shooting cowering uh, theater goers, uh, as they cowered on the floor, shooting in the back of the head. The first time you popped a round off, that shooter would have had to pay attention to something else. The dynamic would have changed. Similarly, in Virginia Tech, 32 people died, gun-free zone. And by the way, that uh, shooter had passed a background check. He was mentally ill, had been adjudicated mentally ill, passed the check anyway. All of these venues, they're gun-free zones. And, you know, uh, when I passed the concealed handgun law, we had to put some gun-free zones to get the votes I needed. Over the years, we have eliminated and removed many of those gun-free locations. Uh, one of them, it's kind of funny, uh, one of the locations that was prohibited initially was churches. Well, I believe that violates the separation. There is no separation, but it violates the church ability to do what they wish. But, you know, uh, frankly, if you have, uh, you know, a congregation that's packing, uh, the sermons are, you know, much shorter and uh, much more to the point. Uh, but we continue to eliminate gun-free zones. A gun-free zone is nothing more than an invitation. You have an A-plus rating from the NRA, so guns are definitely an important issue to you. But what else do the people of Texas need to know? Well, you know, I was a guy who uh, probably the three most significant items that I passed when I was in the Senate, I repealed the motorcycle helmet law. That's kind of a liberty thing. 
And, uh, you know, I passed the concealed handgun law. Uh, I passed a constitutional amendment to allow citizens to access their home equity without government interference and telling them for what uh, you know, purpose they can access their home equity. So I'm kind of a pro-liberty guy. And I believe that government in its zeal to raise the floor and bring everybody up has to recognize that in doing so, in order to fund that, you also have to lower the ceiling. I want the opportunity in Texas uh, to make a mistake. Because whether that's a financial mistake, uh, you know, investing my money or do, but because without that opportunity to, to make, to take choices and take chances, then we also have the uh, diminished opportunity to succeed. You know, I grew up in Texas and I went to school in the 50s. Everything was open to me. Um, and today, you know, I have children, I have grandchildren. I want them to have those same opportunities. And I see an oppressive federal government that uh, with a do-gooder do -gooder mentality continues to pass statutes such as the Endangered Species Act, you know, a lot of other so-called well-intended items of legislation. That mindset is not here in Texas, and we should be thankful for that, but it's creeping this way. And we have to, in my view, maintain Texas as it is and as it was. And not only is that good for Texas, Texas has the ability to lead and redeem this nation because we are liberty. And there are a few other states, but we're the prime state that can redeem this nation. VotePatterson.com. All right, Jerry Patterson, thank you for your time, sir. All right, thank you, Jakari.